السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رب اشرح لي صدری ویسر لی امری وحل العقدت من لسان یفقہ قولی Dear students, welcome back to lecture number four of your English book. This is week number four. This lecture of unit seven is presented by your teacher, Ms. Uzma Sabah. I hope you all are fine and enjoying good health. Dear students, today we will study unit seven and its title is The Ants and the Grasshopper. This unit is about to teach people the benefits and importance of planning and spending time wisely. Planning tasks wisely can help us to fulfill our responsibilities. And always remember, dear students, that we should be responsible in our tasks. Dear students, now open your book, page number 57. I read it for you and try to make it easier for your understanding. The ants and the grasshopper. Once they lift some ants and a grasshopper in a field. One summer day, the grasshopper was having a lot of fun. He was playing, chirping, singing, and dancing in the sun. Just then, a few ants happened to pass by. The grasshopper looked at the ants, who seemed very busy. They were working very hard in the summer sun. He asked the ants, why are you all working so hard? Come and play with me in the field. We are collecting food for the winter, an ant replied. The grasshopper started laughing at the ants on hearing this. But the winter is so far away and we have got plenty of food around us. He said, sunny days won't last forever. You must store food for the winter because soon there will be nothing to eat and you will starve, replied one of the ants. The lazy grasshopper continued playing and wasting time without listening to the advice of the ants. The ants continued their hard work. They stored lots of food in their homes. Now, students, there are two new words for you people. First word is chirping. Chirping means high, um, high or low sounds from birds and insects. And the second word is plenty. Plenty is a large amount as much as you need. Now, students, come to next page, page number 58. Soon, the summer come to an end. A harsh and cold winter arrived. The careless grasshopper found himself without food and shelter. He was starving and shivering with cold. There was no food around and the fields were covered with snow. The fields were covered with snow. He thought of asking the ants for help. He went to their warm and cozy home. He went to meet them. He saw that hardworking ants were enjoying winter happily in their warm and cozy homes. They had plenty of food for the winter. The grasshopper knocked at the ants' door and asked for some food. The ants uh, asked for some food. The ants laughed at the grasshopper and said, You laughed at us when we were collecting food and now you have come to us for help? Have you understood now? that there is a time to work and a time to play? The grasshopper replied, yes, I have realized my mistake. I was so foolish and careless. I have become ill and weak, so please help me. The ants took pity on the grasshopper and gave him food. The next summer, the grasshopper worked hard to store food for coming winter. He had realized the importance of hard work, planning for the future and spending time wisely. Now, students, there are uh, some new words. Shelter. Shelter means uh, 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 feel safe or uh, protection from uh, rain, danger, or attack. Uh, next word is cozy. Cozy means warm, comfortable, and safe. And the third word is collecting. Collecting means to bring things together from different people. Now, students, come to next page, page number 59 for your exercise. Here are some words given, words and their meanings. Uh, first word is chirping, high or low sounds from birds and insects. Second word is plenty, a large amount as much as you need. Third word is shelter, protection from rain, danger or attack. 
fourth word is cozy, warm, comfortable, and safe. And the last word is collect. Me, it's mean its meaning is to bring things together from different people or places. Now, students, we have to use the same words for sentences. We have to make sentences of the same words. First word is chirping. The birds start chirping early in the morning. Plenty. There was plenty of room in that old house. Shelter. Ali took shelter under his friend's umbrella when it rains. Cozy. Ali felt warm and cozy sitting by the fire. Collect. Saad collected the books and piled them on his desk. Now students come to next page, page number 60. Um, answer the given questions. Question number one. Where was the grasshopper playing? Answer, the grasshopper was playing, chirping, singing, and dancing in the sun in a field. Question number two, what were the ants doing and why? Answer, the ants were working hard in the summer sun. They were collecting food for the winter. Question number three, why didn't the grasshopper care about collecting food? Answer, the grasshopper said to the ants that winter is quite so far away and there is plenty of food around, so there is no need to worry. Question number four, what lesson did the grasshopper learn when the winter came? Answer, the grasshopper learned the lesson that we should not waste time in playing and having fun only. There must be balance between work and play. Question number five, what is the importance of planning ahead and spending time wisely? Answer, Planning and spending time wisely are very important because doing something wisely saves us from future worries and determines our success. Now, students, come back to the page number 59. Here is an exercise uh, uh, about compound words. A compound word is formed when two or more words are linked together to form a new word with a new meaning. For example, grass plus hopper. It makes a new word grasshopper. Now come to exercise, exercise A3. Match pair of words below to make compound words and write them in the blank. Here are some words given. We have to match them and, um, and after matching them, make a new compound word or make a new word which is, which is called a compound word and we have to write the compound word in the blank space. Uh, words are super, friend, black, blue, water, market, fall, ship, bell, and boat. So first word is super. We match the super with market and the compound word is supermarket. Second word is friend. We match this friend with a ship and the word is, and the compound word is friendship. And third word is black. We match this black with boat and the compound word is blackboard. Uh, we match this uh, blue with bell and its compound word is bluebell. Uh, and the water with fall, and compound word is waterfall. Now come to page number 61. Exercise D, phonics. When the article D, D when the article D, uh, there are three articles, a, uh, an, and D. When the article D comes before a word that begins with a vowel, it is pronounced as the, when it comes before a word that begins with a consonant sound, it is, it is pronounced as though. Now come to exercise. Exercise D2, circle the sound and underline those sound. First sentence is, the ants worked hard. The ants worked hard because ants start with a vowel sound word, A. Second sentence is, grasshopper learned a great lesson. Though, the grasshopper learned a great lesson because the first word grasshopper start with a consonant, G. So, though grasshopper learned a great lesson. Sentence number three, grasshopper decided to work hard for the next, uh, for the next winter season. Uh, though grasshopper, because the first word grasshopper begins with a consonant G. Though grasshopper decided to work hard for the next winter season. Sentence number four, ants were living in a field. The ants were living in a field because ants start with a, a, a vowel sound. So uh, the ants were living in a field. 
So article, uh, head article sounds like the, and, and the aunts were living in a field, the aunts worked hard, and in sentence number two and three, it sounds like though. And now come to exercise, exercise E2, page number 62, fill in the blanks with, fill in the blanks with appropriate words mentioned below to complete the fable. Here are some words given. We have to use these words and we have to uh, uh, write these words in the blank spaces of the uh, fable and have to complete the story. We have to complete the story. What is a fable? A fable is a short story with animal character uh, and it has a moral lesson in it. It is not based on reality. Fable is not based on reality. It has animal uh, characters and it has moral lesson too. So there is a fable given with blacks. We have to complete the, uh, this fable with the given words. Once they lived a hare and tortoise in a forest, the hare was very proud of his feet. He used to make fun of the tortoise for being too slow. One day the tortoise challenged the hare to race. The hare accepted the challenge. The race started. The hare ran very fast. The tortoise was left much behind. The hare got tired and stopped to have some rest under a tree. He fell asleep. Though tortoise passed him and reached the winning post, the hare woke up and ran as fast as he could. He saw that the tortoise was already at the winning post. The tortoise had won the race. Now students, come to next page, page number 63. Next exercise, exercise F grammar, reflexive pronoun. A reflexive pronoun is a pronoun that refers back to the subject of the same sentence. It ends in self or selves. What is the pronoun? First of all, we define what is a pronoun. Pronoun is a word that we use instead of a noun. And reflexive pronoun is a pronoun that refers back to the subject. Now come to the exercise, exercise F2. Complete the following sentences with the reflexive pronouns. The little girl learned how to dress black for school. The subject of the sentence is the little girl. So the reflexive pronouns uh, refers back to the little girl. The little girl learned how to dress herself, herself for school. I used a video to teach them black how to knit. The subject in the second sentence is I, and the reflexive pronoun uh, refers back to I. I used a video to teach myself how to knit so in sentence number three, do you boys think you can handle this blank? In the third sentence, boys are the subject and the pronoun refers back to the to boys. They are plural. Do you boys think you can handle this yourself? In sentence number four, George and Mary did the project all by blank. In the fourth sentence, George and Mary, they are subject. And the reflexive pronoun uh, refers back to George and Mary, and they are also plural. So George and Mary did the project by themselves, by themselves. In sentence number five, in the last sentence, the calculator will turn blank off when you do not use it. In sentence number five, the subject is calculator, and the reflexive pronoun refers back to calculator. So calculator is a non-living thing. The calculator will turn itself off when you do not use it. Now students, come to page number 64, helping verbs. There are some helping verbs given. We have to use these helping verbs in sentences and our sentences in a negative form. First helping verb is be, be with not. I will not be able to attend your party. Second helping verb is do and do with not, you do not eat sandwiches. And the third helping verb is have with not. I have not decided to go out. Now students come to next page, 
page number, uh, page number 64, uh, apostrophe. We use the apostrophe to mark the omitted letter in contractions. When we combine two words, we omit some letters. Uh, apostrophe hum use karte hain uh, jab humne kisi uh, word mein se kisi alphabet ko kisi letter ko omit karna hota hai means ke usko wahan se humne uh, nikal dena hota hai wahan par us alphabet ki jagah us letter ki jagah hum apostrophe use kar lete hain jab hum do words ko combine karte hain two words ko hum combine karte hain to hum us time par किसी एल लेटर को ओमिट कर देते हैं और उसकी जगह पॉस्टिफी लगा देते हैं और इस तरह से ये जो करना होता है ये जो हमारे पास एक सिंबल आ रहा है ये तो कहलाते हैं पॉस्टिफी जो कि किसी लेटर को निकालने उस लेटर को ओमिट करने पर या वहां पर प्लेस किया जाता है वहां पर लगाया जाता है लेकिन जब इस तरह से किया जाता है किसी अल्फाबेट को किसी लेटर को उसमें से उस वर्ड में से निकाला जाता है तो इस करने को इस पॉस्टिफी को वहां लगाने को और वहां से किसी अल्फाबेट को निकालने को कॉन्ट्रेक्शन कहते हैं यानी कि उसको हमने शॉर्ट कर दिया उसमें से हमने अल्फाबेट निकाल दिया नाउ सो कम टू एक्सरसाइज एफ सेवन मेक कॉन्ट्रेक्शन ऑफ द फॉलोइंग वर्ड्स हमारे पास वर्ड्स गिवन है हमने उसकी कॉन्ट्रेक्शन फॉर्म बनानी है हमने वहां से किसी अल्फाबेट को किसी लेटर को निकाल देना है ओमिट करना है और उसकी जगह पे पॉस्टिफी को वहां पे लगाना है उसे वहां पे पुट करना है डिड नॉट डिडेंट कुड नॉट कुडेंट शुड नॉट शुडेंट हैव नॉट हैवेंट हैड नॉट हैडेंट इज नॉट इजेंट एंड विल नॉट वोट नॉट स्टूडेंट्स कम टू लास्ट एक्सरसाइज same page page 65 exercise g writing exercise g2 write a fable fable with title and moral in your notebook what is a fable again we define fable fable is a short story with animal character it has a moral lesson in it and it is not based on reality so we have to write a fable with title title and moral टाइटल कहा आता है बिफोर स्टोरी टाइटल आता है एंड आफ्टर स्टोरी जो है वो मॉरल आता है फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी राइट टाइटल टाइटल अ लॉन एंड अ माउस वंस दे लिव अ लॉन इन अ जंगल ही वाज वेरी प्राउड ऑफ ही वाज ही वाज वेरी प्राउड ऑफ हिज स्ट्रेंथ एक दफा का जिक्र है एक जंगल में एक शेर रहता था और वो बहुत ज्यादा उसको फख्र था उसे गुरूर था किस पे अपनी ताकत पे अपनी स्ट्रेंथ पे अटाइनी माउस लिव्ड नियर बाय एक छोटा सा चूहा भी जो था वो भी उस करीब ही रहता था वन डे द लॉइन वॉज स्लीपिंग अंडर अ ट्री एक दिन क्या हुआ शेर दरख्त के नीचे सो रहा था बाय चांस अचानक ही द माउस क्लाइम्ड अप द लॉइन एंड स्टार्टेड जंपिंग एंड रनिंग ओवर हिज बॉडी अचानक ही क्या हुआ के चूहा जो था वो उसने चरांग लगा दी उस लॉइन के ऊपर जंप कर दिया और फिर उसने उसके ऊपर जंपिंग करना शुरू कर दी और उसने जो था उसके ऊपर उसके बॉडी के ऊपर भागना शुरू कर दिया द लॉइन वो कप शेर जाग गया एंड बिकेम एंग्री और गुस्से हो गया ही कॉट होल्ड ऑफ द माउस उसने पकड़ लिया उस चूहे को एंड डिसाइडेड टू किल द माउस और उसने सोच लिया फैसला कर लिया कि वो चूहे को मार देगा द माउस बेग्ड फॉर मर्सी चूहा जो था वो अपनी जान की जान बचाने के लिए उसने उससे रिक्वेस्ट की बैक किया अपनी जान की अमान पाई उससे और उसने उसको कहा कि मुझे माफ कर दे इसके बहुत सारे हम इसको ट्रांसलेशन उर्दू में कर सकते हैं द लॉन टुक पिटी उस शेर को उस पर रहम आ गया टुक पिटी रहम आ गया ऑन हिम एंड लेट हिम गोर उसको उसने जाने दिया किसको जाने दिया चूहे को आफ्टर सम डेज कुछ दिनों के बाद द लॉन वॉज कॉट इन नेट ऑफ अंटर शेर जो था वो क्या हो गया कॉट इन अट जाल में फंस गया ऑफ अ हंटर शिकारी के ही स्ट्रगल्ड हार्ड उसने बहुत कोशिश की टू ब्रेक द नेट के वो तोड़ दे उस जाल को बट फेल लेकिन वो फेल हो गया वो हार गया द लॉन बिगेन टू रोर जो शेर था वो उसने चिल्लाना शुरू कर दिया अब जो शेर चिल्लाता है और आवाज अपनी निकालता है उसको इंग्लिश में रोर करना कहते हैं रोर जैसे हम उर्दू में उसे कहते हैं धारना ठीक है ना वैसे तो हम कहते हैं ना चिड़िया चहचहाती है इंसान बोलता है तो इस तरह से हम जो है वो 
جانوروں کے لیے ان کے بولنے کے لیے مختلف الفاظ جو ہیں وہ استعمال کرتے ہیں شیر کے بولنے کو اردو میں دھارنا کہتے ہیں اور انگلش میں رور کہتے ہیں دا ماؤس ہرڈ دا وائس آف دا لاؤن آف دا لائن دا ماؤس ہرڈ دا وائس آف دا لائن ماؤس نے اس چوہے نے ہرڈ دا وائس اس نے سنی وہ آواز آف دا لائن شیر کی ہی ڈسائڈیڈ ٹو ہیلپ اس نے فیصلہ کیا کہ وہ مدد کرے گا دا لائن شیر کی ہی رین ٹوورڈز دا لائن وہ بھاگا شیر کی طرف اینڈ اسٹارٹیڈ کٹنگ دا نیٹ اور اس نے کاٹنا شروع کر دیا اس جال کو ود ہز شارپ ٹیت اپنے تیز دانتوں سے لکیلی خوش قسمتی سے ہی واز ایبل ٹو ٹیئر اوے وہ اس قابل ہو گیا یا وہ کر کر سکا ٹیئر اوے کاٹ دیا اس نے دا نیٹ اس جال کو سون جلد ہی دا لائن واز فری اگین شیر دوبارہ آزاد ہو گیا ہی تھینک دا ماؤس اس نے شکریہ ادا کیا چوہے کا اینڈ وینٹ اوے اور وہ وہاں سے چلا گیا مورن نتیجہ کیا ہوا ڈو گڈ ہیو گڈ شیر نے چوہے کے ساتھ بھلائی کی اس کو معاف کر دیا تو کیا ہوا کہ چوہے نے احسان کا بدلہ جو تھا وہ احسان سے دیا اس نے بھی اس کو اس کے شکاری کے جال سے آزاد کرا دیا اچھا کرو گے اچھا بدلہ پاؤ گے اردو میں ہم اسے کہتے ہیں احسان کا بدلہ احسان اچھا کرو گے ڈو گڈ اچھا کرو گے تو اچھا ہی اس کا نتیجہ پاؤ گے یعنی کہ ہم اگر اچھا کام کریں گے تو ہمیں بھی اس کا اچھا ہی بدلہ ملے گا ان شاء اللہ ڈیئر اسٹوڈینٹس وی ول میٹ اگین سون ان شاء اللہ انٹل دین اللہ حافظ تھینک یو